after I read the book in Bombay, I knew I had to write this book. It's careful, but if you're smart, you can read between the lines. I don't want to be taken out anytime soon if I can help it. But I do think that, that we're in the battle for, for freedom, for our way of life. I think that it, it is very much a rigged deck. I think that we're up against things that most people don't want to see, will never see. It's possible. I think people are waking up due to the, the internet and the media and all that, seeing through the media. I think that when your house gets foreclosed, maybe you're interested in how we got there. You're interested in how your representatives in Congress and Senate and the Senate may have betrayed you. How things are allowed to happen in America that are going to ultimately destroy it. I think people, when they've lost their houses and they're kneeling in the dust and they're beginning to represent people in the, in the 1930s Great Depression, Dust Bowl, who've lost everything they own, suddenly have the skin peel away from their eyes and they say, wow, how did we get here? Wasn't it just recently after World War I that Woodrow Wilson enacted the, the Federal Reserve that was supposed to stop this kind of depression? Wasn't the income tax that happened soon after that supposed to help? Is it possible Wilson and other presidents owed their existence on supporters out of the, in the shadows of history, out of sight? If so, are some of the things they do not in the best interest of the public, but are they serving another agenda? We go back to eyes wide shut, the useful idiots. We go back to Clinton at his Democratic acceptance speech, hearkening to Carol Quigley, his mentor at Georgetown University, who wrote the book that outed this agenda called Tragedy and Hope. It was really about the giant investment bankers who run things above the armies, above everyone else. This is very touchy territory. That's why you're gonna, you're, you're, you can go through 30 books on the Federal Reserve and never get the Class A stockholders of the Fed. In their court is the fact that the public cannot connect dots very well, if, if at all. So I wrote One World to help connect some of these dots. I mean, it was after my wake up in India. I grew up in an atheistic family. My father was, we would call liberal intelligentsia. At his high point, he was inspector general of the U.S. Information Agency. He at least had the IQ to get into Mensa. He was a Rhodes Scholar candidate, extremely well read. And I grew up differing with him on everything. Things that he bought into, I didn't. Oh, I hope for the best. I love America. I love the original idea. I think the founders were brilliant. I think that their whole anti-matrix constitution against tyranny and, and those who would destroy the, the Republic was just prescient beyond belief. Far-ranging. Oh, so far-ranging. But you see, we got a... what the plans for a new American century call for. An attack on the level of Pearl Harbor. It's called the World Trade Center. There are a lot of questions about I mean, a lot of them. And they'd just as soon bury them. But if it served any purpose, it's that big chess piece. Here, I'll move my queen out here, take it, and then I'll checkmate you. A Pearl Harbor level event was what was called for. Wolfowitz, Fife, Wormser, all under the VP 
at the time. Who I considered a useful idiot. I considered Bush way beyond his pay grade of being president of the White House. This is a guy who I thought has the IQ to maybe run a Sears outlet, but not run America. Oh my gosh, he'd hardly been overseas. He could hardly be pointed to a country on the map and identify what it was. When he got in, I began to wonder more and more. I mean, I think we're at a point now, it, it'll be virtually impossible to get a good man in the White House who's not owned by the cabal. So the momentum of the agenda of the destruction of America will go on unceased, and at some point, I think millions are going to be kneeling in the street when the national debt finally implodes and we got basically dollars that are worth a penny each. During the Weimar Republic at the end of World War I in Germany, they were paying people wheelbarrows of cash because their paper currency had lost all value. And as I said on radio, I I warned people, they said, well, you know, someone asked, well, what is inflation like? I mean, why is it so bad? Well, the reason it's so bad is, let me give you an example. Think of a postal worker who saved his whole life. In one time, $30,000 was worth a lot. He'd buy a house for that at one time. By the time inflation has run its course, and they're printing out paper dollars like that, we're hearing it all the time now especially from Ron Paul, it's killing America. Well, the $30,000 it was saved might buy a, a bag of groceries. Is this a problem? It was originally would buy a house. Now it might buy a bag of groceries. And as I said, why do you think gold is going up? Paper currencies always slid into the gutter. We're seeing that right now. There are so many warning signs right now, you can't believe it. You have some people, and I think Ron Paul is one of the few who will tell you the truth. I think most of them won't. I think there are a lot of opportunists in politics who know how much I think I'll tell you so you can believe in me. I think there are a lot of them. I think Paul is in a class of his own of individual integrity. He is on the Federal Reserve. That's why he wants to audit it. He's got to do it carefully. I think that unless he's careful, he will have an accident. That's what happens to people who know too much. They have convenient accidents. Millennia ago, we were given warnings about what I think is a very dark time in human history, and I'll leave it at that. I think America is approaching a very dark time. I think that there is betrayal at very high levels. I think when you see what is now occupied airports, I mean, years ago you could run into an airplane, you wouldn't be checked. I remember my father was a high-ranking diplomat. We flew to Europe, we flew to the Middle East, we flew all over the world. I've traveled my whole life. I remember getting in an airplane and just given a courtesy wave and we're glad to have you here. It was a million leagues from the draconian lines that are now at airports with these giant Franken machine scanners that scan your whole body and throw out radiation. I, I don't go into them. Or you have the pat down where they grab your private parts or whatever. Th these are violations of the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, but they've got a public who don't even know what the Fourth Amendment is, so it's a piece of cake. It's a kind of thing Orwell warned about when he warned about the New World Order in his book 1984. They've known this thing has been coming, you know, for a long time. Or Orwell wrote about this stuff uh, back in the 40s. He was privy to British intelligence. This whole TSA search thing, these draconian security lines are a nightmare. It means they're going to be able to hone in on you. Anyone who's a free thinking individual could get nailed. They're going to hone in on you.
and they're going to keep being able to, well, the same machines that they can put you in to look at your body, they now have in moving trucks, and they can x-ray your apartment or your house and see what you're doing. Orwell wrote about this sort of thing in 1984. Winston, the lone protagonist, standing in front of his two-way television, looking at him, correcting him. This whole thing is, is cyber media feedback. Norbert Weiner at MIT saw through what this kind of cyber feedback would be like. Some people do, most don't. Some can see the writing on the wall, most don't. Part of it, maybe it's moral cowardice, maybe it's indifference, maybe it's I don't want to bother, I don't want my life to be shaken. Unfortunately, whether you like it or not, if we get a Great Depression type of thing, uh, lives will be interfered with whether they like it or not. I think more people are going to wake up. I think people are waking up now. We're, we're, what we're told, the rhetoric just doesn't match the reality. This is happening more and more. Wake up.